All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be going over how to get back into a Synology NAS that you've gotten locked out of. And there's a ton of different ways this can happen. So we're gonna go over all the like little things to check and try first that are really easy to get back from. And then finally, we're going to go over how to do a soft reset on the NAS so we can actually get back in. None of this should delete any of your data as long as you've got the encryption key. So if you have encrypted your volume, you're really gonna wanna make sure you've got your eyes on that key before you do this. But first off, we're going to talk about some steps that we can do to get back in without having to reset the NAS. And it really depends on what has happened and why we're locked out. So I'm gonna start this tutorial off by just going over some common ways that you can get locked out or just can't connect to the NAS. And then we're going to go over the ultimate solution, which is that soft reset that I talked about. Okay, so first we're gonna start with one of the easiest ones, and that is where you may have moved networks. So maybe you got a new house with a new Wi-Fi router, and probably at the old place, you set up a static IP address directly on the NAS, and now when you get to the new place, it just does not connect to the network. So to kind of avoid going into too much detail here, if you set up a static IP address on a subnet, so a network like 192.168.1, that is now different than the network at your new house. So maybe your old network was 192.168.1, but your new network is 192.168.10. That old network, the NAS is gonna be trying to connect to, and it's not going to be able to. So that's why I tend to recommend people set up a static IP address with a DHCP reservation. It's not technically a static IP address, but it gives similar results. And that way the router is giving it the same IP address every time, rather than the NAS just grabbing it no matter what. But if you did this, you probably only did it on one of the interfaces, only one of the ports on the back of the NAS. So if you're plugged into port number one, try plugging into port number two and then going to find.synology.com or download the Synology Assistant. By doing this, it's very likely that your second interface was set up to a thing called DHCP. That's the default. And DHCP has the Synology reach out and ask the router for an IP address. So that will work no matter where you are because your new router will give it the proper IP address. And so by coming to find.synology.com, this is how you can locate it. And another really useful thing that is much better than this is to actually go in and download this Synology Assistant right here. It is far better at detecting Synologies on the network because it actually uses everything. So that's the first tip. If you've just had a new network and your static IP address is no longer there, try a different interface. And then once you're logged in, redo it to a DHCP reservation. All right, so moving on. The next one that's pretty common is you accidentally locked yourself out. So you blocked your own IP address because you were trying the wrong thing, but you do know your password. So this is where you'll log into the NAS. You'll try to type in your username and password, and it will say, sorry, this IP address has been blocked. The easiest way to fix this is to just go on your cell phone and connect to the NAS that way. By going on your cell phone or another computer on the network, it is going to have a different local IP address. And so, it will not be part of that block list. And so you can come in here, log into the NAS, and once you've logged in, come into control panel, go into security, protection, allow block list, and delete anything in here that has been blocked. So if you have blocked yourself out and you do have another device on the network, that will have a different IP address and will not be blocked. All right, so now rounding out the kind of quick and easy ones to fix here without having to do our full soft reset is you have lost access to the email address you use for adaptive multi-factor authentication. If you've got adaptive multi-factor authentication and you log in remotely, it is going to require you to type in an email code that is sent to you, just like your normal six digit. If you no longer have access to that email account, that is a problem. The easiest thing to do is one of two things. One, try to log in from a device that you've used before. So if it's a laptop, hopefully it still has the cookie on there that says, yes, he's okay, he's remembered, I, I can trust this connection, and try logging from that. If that does not work, you're gonna to have to wait until you're in the same local network as the NAS and use that. Adaptive multi-factor authentication only pops up when you're outside of your local network. 
So try typing in the local IP address or go to find.synology.com and then connect to it with that local IP address. By using that local IP address, it will guarantee to be a local connection and it should not require you to have that email code. And so after that, you can go in and change the account and all that good stuff. Okay, so those were three quick and easy ways that you can get in without having to do a soft reset on NAS. But sometimes stuff happens and I know I've locked myself out of the NAS multiple times by doing a lot of things. I have accidentally disabled DSM access for all users. I have set up firewall rules that restricted my access to DSM. So many things have happened that I have completely locked myself out of the NAS, but thankfully it is fairly easy to get back up and running as long as you've got physical access to NAS and a copy of the encryption key. If you do not have the encryption key used to encrypt your volume and you did do full volume encryption or shared folder encryption, stop, figure out where that is before doing it. And if you don't have access to it, try reaching out to Synology support. I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to do anything, but if you do not have those keys and you proceed with these next steps, you are going to lose all of your data. So be warned, that's only for people who have done full volume encryption or shared folder encryption. If you've not done either one of those things, or if you did those things and have the keys, you're totally fine to proceed here. I just wanna give that warning. And what we're gonna do is what's called a soft reset. There are two different types of resets on Synology. There's a soft and a hard reset. The soft reset does not destroy any data. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the Synology page that talks through everything it does, but basically it undoes everything that you might have done to lock yourself out. So I'll leave a link down in the description below this page. And this right here is everything that the soft reset is gonna do. It is going to delete the password of the admin account and re-enable it, so that way we can get in. It's going to disable two-factor authentication. It is going to reset up our DSM ports to 5000, 5001. So right now I run DSM on 9475. After I do the soft reset, it is going to be on port 5000, 5001. It is going to delete any static IP addresses and set everything back up to DHCP. So as I talked about earlier, if you had a static IP address that's no longer valid, it will fix that. It is also going to disable auto block. So it'll fix that as well as your firewall rules. And these are all the things that basically just sets it back down to zero. A couple of things it does do is if you are using HA, it will break that cluster. So be sure if you're running HA that you know what you're doing and you really do not lock yourself out. It will also remove your VMM manager cluster, which is really annoying and you have to set it back up. I've had to do this before because well, I accidentally disabled DSM for all users. Then, as I said earlier, your encrypted volumes are going to get unmounted and you're going to have to have the original key that was used to encrypt those or the current key. So I've got those here and this actually has an encrypted volume. So this is valid for anybody who's running DSM 6.2 or beyond. So that should be most people. If not, look in this article and it will tell you what to do for those earlier versions of DSM. All right, so now let's go ahead and do it. And this is going to get us back in no matter what happens. And then after this, we're gonna go over all the steps to fix everything we have done. So the reset button is on the back. I've got a paperclip right here and I'm gonna hold it for four seconds until I hear the beep. And remember, only wait for the first beep and then stop pushing. And there is our beep. Now, we're gonna give it about a minute or so. If I wanna do a full reset, you do not wanna do this unless you wanna format your NAS. Within 10 seconds, hold the reset button again for another four seconds and you will hear three more beeps. So be careful if you think you heard the beep and you're trying to do mode one soft reset, stand back for a minute and then check and see if it worked. If not, do it again. But if you do these back to back, it will do a hard reset, which is a full format of the volume. All right, so now that incessant beeping means that it has worked. So this is really annoying on camera. So I'm going to move it out from underneath the mic. All right, so I just moved the NAS out from directly underneath the mic, so that beeping should not be as bad for y'all. I do apologize. 
what that beeping is telling us is the volume is gone because we soft reset it and it was an encrypted volume. So if you've not encrypted your volume or your shared folders, you will not get that beep. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and go to find.synology.com and I'm just gonna refresh this page to get it to find everything again. And it is going to relocate the NAS with its new IP address that was pulled from DHCP. And remember the port is going to be 5000 and 5001 again. So that's why it always makes sense to do the find.synology.com if you do reset this, because it's gonna pull a new IP address and everything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit connect. And so just like that, it's found it. And if we look at our port up here, it's 5000. And now I'm gonna pretend like I've completely forgotten the admin password. And so to do this, the soft reset has reset the admin account and the password is nothing. So to get back in, I'm gonna type in admin and just hit enter for the password. So no password. It still takes us through this screen funny enough. And now what it's gonna have me do is create a new password for the admin user. Sorry, the account with the admin credentials. If you had multiple accounts in the administrator group, it would give you the option there. And so I'm gonna come up with a new password for it here. And we are going to sign in with that user account that we just reset the password for with that new password. And now the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this thing from beeping. So you can go into control panel and hit mute. Whew. Hate doing soft resets because it just keeps beeping. Synology, add a button to say mute. Well, they actually do on their rack units. All right, so now we are back in. We have a bunch of stuff we've gotta do. The very first thing is I encrypted my volume. So therefore all my shared folders are gone. So now we have to go ahead and re-enable the encryption vault as well as re-upload our keys. So we're going to follow these steps right here and say global settings, enable encryption vault, create a new local password for the encryption vault, just as you did the first time. Hit save. And now we can go ahead and upload that encryption key file by hitting unlock. So we're going to go ahead, and browse to it. And I've got mine just on the desktop. And then we can go ahead and repair the local encryption vault as well. And if all this goes well, we should get our data back. All right, so as this is unlocking the volume, we can see that our shared folders have started to mount and our packages are starting to run again. So once all of our packages have run again, we will get this message right here that it has been successfully unlocked and everything should be looking good. We'll probably wanna go ahead and do a reboot after this just to make sure everything's nice and good. But we do have a few things that we need to reset up because they were reset after we did this. So the most critical are gonna be the basic ones here. That is going to be our auto block, firewall rules if you're using them, disabling the admin account and any custom ports. So what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is make sure that this admin account is disabled. If you just sign in with your user account because you knew your password, it will not disable this account. So just make sure that the admin account is disabled. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to need to go into security, protection, and re-enable our auto block rules. Go into firewall and reset it up if you've got any firewall rules there. Re-enable adaptive MFA and 2FA if you're using them and account protection. Now, if you were using a static IP address on here, go ahead and enter that back in. And that should be pretty much it. Everything else will have just gone ahead and automatically worked. And the one thing I do like to do is just reboot the NAS at the end here, just in case there's any weird junk from the volume not booting up while it was there, and just to make sure it boots up and works nice and cleanly. But we're back in. Everything is back up and running there. And once we reboot this thing, it should come back up exactly as it was before. The one thing I would really recommend doing is just double check that each of these things has been met 
and that you've accounted for it. So if you had any specific settings there, make sure to go ahead and re-enable them because it is going to reset your whole networking stack basically to defaults because it thinks that there's a chance you mess those up. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this. If you wanna see any other tutorials, subscribe. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. And if you wanna hire me, I do this professionally. There's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.